For 48 hours, rain and high winds had swept across Scotland, and it hadn't stopped in those, all those two days. There was puddles on the road and the driving conditions were pretty terrible. But in the following few days, the weather forecast was looking a bit better and I was having a few days holiday so I was keen to get away and have some adventure. So I packed up the camper van and headed to a familiar car park ready for some adventures in the days ahead. guys, how are you doing? I tell you what, it is wild out there. I don't know if you can hear that. You probably can't. With the winds kind of howling around the van and the rain's battering off it. However, that being said, I am uh, I'm again, I'm, a, I'm in a car park quite high up, up in the mountains at 400 metres at the moment. And the weather's been terrible the last two days. And my original plan for this uh, adventure was to, to do quite a long walk, but it does involve some burn crossings at the furthest away point. So I've decided to leave that adventure, not for tomorrow, but for the day after. So the adventure that I'll be doing tomorrow is up a couple of Monroes, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I think it's going to be pretty wet underfoot, but the this rain has literally fallen, it's been on a conveyor belt <laughs> in the Scottish Highlands for the last two days. As that moves away, it's a cold front, and the, the rains have turned to snow in the higher higher top, so I'm hoping tomorrow that I'm going to get some snow. Time will tell. Anyway, I'm going to be spending the night in the van. You know what? I probably don't even need an early start tomorrow because I've swapped things about. But anyway, I'm up, uh, I'm up here now, so I'm going to get myself comfortable and hope that that rain goes, uh, goes off for the morning. So, time for some tea, and then we'll see if it clears later on. Some chicken korma and rice, which doesn't look too appetising here, but actually it was quite tasty. And that's what we had for tea before settling down to the night and listening to the football. The wild weather had settled down overnight and I woke the next morning to a kind of dank grey sky so I had a nice long lie in before getting up and getting myself ready for the day ahead. I pottered around the van getting all my gear ready and eventually set off on my hike up the mountain. Here, the path splits. Am I going to go that way? Or am I going to go that way? Ooh, look at that nice peak up there. Ooh, ooh. This way. Oh, look at this. Fantastic. <laughs> what a lovely day. The, the forecast was chopping and changing. And where I am today, I'm away for two days basically. I'm actually going to be away for three days. But I'm away on a, on a trip in a camper van as you probably saw. And the trip that I'm doing today, going up here, up this mountain over my shoulder, I was planning on doing tomorrow and I was going to do a big day today. But I'm going to, I'm, I've changed my mind. I'm going to do the big day tomorrow and the reason being uh, probably in next week's video you'll see this. The furthest away point on that big day involves a couple of burn crossings and when I was driving up it was torrential rain. It was absolutely chucking it down. It had been, it's been wet for a couple of days and the, the burns and going across the uh, 
the falls of Dockart in Cullin. My God, it just made, or made me change my mind. Uh, I, those those burns might have been impassable, and I'm about, I don't know, I would have been quite far away from the car at that point. So I'm going I'm to leave that for tomorrow. Anyway, today, as the sun is starting to come out, it's lovely. I've, I've not really done many pieces to camera since I left the, the, cam, the, the camper, um, because it's been so busy. This is a very popular path up here. In fact, I was up here a few weeks ago, up on Ben Laws, if you saw that video above the inversion and the, the, the fog bank over Loch Tay. And uh, I'm not going up there today, but the, the initial part of the path heads up there, so it's very busy and I, you know, I, don't like doing, <laughs> I don't like doing pieces to camera or filming. I look a bit weird, a bit geeky. So um, yeah, I've come off that path and this, this path's dead, there's nobody on it. And this is the hill I'm going up here. So I'm going to get cracked on and I'll do a wee bit more once I get to the Bielach. I'll maybe explain why I've chosen this hill today. Right, let's get cracked on. So if you want a relatively quiet hill walk starting from the same car park, I suggest going up this route. The, the path that I was going up is, uh, is more often used on the descent from the popular Ben Laws and as I headed up today there weren't many people around in it. It was quite nice to, to gain some solitude after seeing so many people. It was nice seeing them on the main Ben Laws path. Anyway, I was headed for the Bielach between the two mountains where uh, I decided to stop and get geared up and do a bit to camera. Whew. Well, I tell you what, it's getting colder now. As you can see, I've just got my, my base layer, my geo layer, I've got tights on under this and I always start off a bit colder, but there was no wind coming up and uh, it was quite sunny, but now there's a bit of a breeze, I'm at the Bielach, I'm about 900 metres and not far away from the snow line, in fact, behind me, I don't know if you'll make it out, Ben Laws has got a good covering on it, which is lovely, so it's a bit late, it's, uh, yeah, so it's 11 o'clock now, you're probably used to me having really early starts, but yeah, when I woke up this morning, I looked outside, the, the weather was pretty dank and manky, so the forecast was improving, so that's why I left it a bit later. Anyway, I'm going to stop here, there's a, looks like there's a rain shower coming in, so I'm going to get layered up here and, uh, yeah, get my hat on, and then there's a final, final steep ascent up here, another couple of hundred metres to the top of uh, the hill, which is called Neil Karanich, and, uh, I think it's a, it's over a thousand metres anyway, I'll, I'll report back and check the map when I'm up there and give you more info, but yeah, time to get layered up and get some heat inside me. Oh, right. As I mentioned, when I left the van a few uh, a few hours beforehand, uh, the sun was out and there wasn't much wind, so I'd, I hadn't put my, my warm jacket on at that point, I would have been too warm when I was walking and it's just a wee tip. If, you, if you're feeling nice and cosy when you're leaving the car and you start going up hill, you, you usually find that you're having to stop pretty quickly to shed the layers. But anyway, as I'd gained tight and I'd got to this beer like the wind had, had whipped up. It was, uh, it, was, it was flying up the glen and skirting over the beer like and I was starting to feel the cold. And I wasn't too far away from the, the freezing point either, so I'd got my hat on and my winter jacket and set off for the final pull up to the first Munro of the day. Knowing that I had a few days of hiking ahead of me and travelling around Scotland in my camper van, I was taking it easy and uh, yeah, it was always nice. It was always nice to see the views of Ben Lors and Ben Glass with the, the snow capped peaks. And before long, I was into the snow line myself. There wasn't too much of the white stuff, but it was still, it was still enough to, to give a nice white coating to the top of the hill. And here we are. The summit. Oh, it's full on winter up here. It's cold. I've got my my snow goggles on, as you can probably see. And this is the uh, summit cairn of Meal Corony. And it sits at 1,069 meters. And you know, I've been up here a couple of times, but I've never come up from the Bielach between Meal Corony and Ben Glass. I, I usually come in. There's a circuit you can do 
uh, which most guidebooks and uh, descriptions suggest you do. But you know what? The parking at the bottom is not great, and there's a big, big car park uh, down for the Ben Lord car park, and it was quite nice coming up there. It's a short, steep ascent from the Bealach, but the walk up to the Bealach is uh, is nice and nice and gentle. And I've been wanting to come up this way for quite a while because, I've, as you've probably seen, uh, as I mentioned before, I was on Ben Lors just a few weeks ago. But if, every time I got Ben Lors, and I'm coming back down, I can see this this hill, and I can see the I can see a path coming off it. Although the, you can't see the whole path all the way down from there, and, I, and I've always been intrigued. But there's a pretty good path all the way up. It's steep, as I said, in places, but yeah, not too bad. Anyway, what's the time now? Quarter to twelve. I'm going to go on to the next peak. The next peak is a bit smaller. Milachoir Lay, it's called. And I'm going to do a circuit and then probably head back. I'm either, I'm either going to come back over the top of this hill and back down the way I came, or I might head down to the road and do a bit of road walking back to the car. I don't know. But it's lovely. There's a wee smattering of snow. That was the tail end of that rain going through last night as the cold front uh, passed over. The, the rain turned to snow up here. So nothing too bad. I do have the ice axe and crampos just in case, because you never know. But yeah, lovely. Right. I might clear. <laughs> I don't know, but there's a, br there's a brisk wind up here, so I'm going to keep walking and head over to the second Monroe of the day, Milachoir Lay. So, less talking, let's get walking. <laughs> right, anyway, over my shoulder, which has is, is just disappeared into the cloud, <laughs> is the second Monroe of the day, Milachoir. Late, and it's not as high as I said, so you drop about 200 meters, 250 meters maybe from the summit of the first Monroe, and then this one's about 100 150 meters vertically up. And it's nice walking conditions here, it's, it's been a while since I've been up here, and uh, nice sort of the gradient of the grass, nice soft grass is quite nice for walking downhill and striding onward, shall we say. But the clag doesn't seem to be lifting that much, unfortunately, as you can see. So not many views, better views this morning. Anyway, right. I'll report back on the top of Milachoyer Lay. Let's go. The height between the two summits was lovely and grassy. It wasn't too bad and it had been a few years since I'd been up here. It was lovely getting reacquainted with the area. Fantastic area. And before long, the summit cairn of the second Monroe was within sight. And I uh, yeah, headed over to it. But yeah, there was still no views, so I didn't loiter on the top here. There was a wee breeze, as you can probably hear. So I uh, decided to descend down the mountain a bit further. And I wasn't going to go back the way I'd came. I decided to make a loop of it. And I uh, headed down the mountain towards the road. However, the sun did start to show itself, so I found a lovely little perch where I sat for probably 20 or 25 minutes, just taking in my surroundings. What a lovely part of the world this is. Having enjoyed the views for a wee while, it was soon time to descend back down towards the road. But before I got to the road, I had to cross the bog of hell, a boggy McBog fest. Ooh. Well, as you can probably see, that's me back in the road. It's about three or four kilometres now back to the car. Down here.
the final part of the hike saw me going back down the road and it was a nice gentle gradient and it was downhill as well which was fine but it's never nice walking on tarmac with your hull walking boots I always find it it hurts my feet but anyway needs must and it was certainly better than uh, going going back the linear route I made a nice circuit of it and before long I was back at the camper and ready to get the gear off and get a hot cup of tea inside me. Well, that's me back at the van, as you can see, after a bit of road walking. And I'll tell you one thing, I know there's been a lot of rain in the last two days, but the section from when you get to the bottom of the second Monroe out to the car, out to the road, sorry, which is the usual path in from, for, well, most common descriptions tell you to park and go across this, this area of bog. My God, it's probably one of the worst bogs I've come across in a long time. Albeit it has been very wet, but that was, uh, that was a killer. So I was actually glad to get to the road. But then it's a bit of a road trudge to get back down here. Anyway, I'm away to start next week's adventure. <laughs> She'll be watching it next week, but for me it'll be tonight and tomorrow. So I'm away to pack up the van and head further up the road. And tomorrow is a long day and I'm hoping the weather's going to be good. But tune in next week and, and see what it's like. So um, thanks for watching. If you're, if you're still watching at this point, thank you very much. And uh, stay safe out there. And I'll see you on the next adventure. Right, let's get packed up and head up the glen.